looking after children with special needs can be challenging, can be complex. You can get extreme behaviours at home. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Zoe has autism. So does Debbie's younger child, Sean. Zoe goes to an all-girls specialist autistic school. Um, she's doing amazingly there and she's probably going to achieve independence, which is amazing considering when she was diagnosed she was thought to be severe and non-verbal. Sean finds the simplest demands overwhelming, so he needs a very, very specialist school that can understand that type of child. The children's education and transport to and from their specialist schools is funded by Surrey Council. Sean's 12, budding DJ Zoe is 14. What were your favourite subjects? What are the best things that you like about them? I'm not sure to be honest, but I like doing science a lot. We've been learning about lots of atoms in the periodic table. PB is lead, I believe. Is it? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're right. I'll take your word for it. But Debbie's worried her children's education, which costs the council tens of thousands of pounds a year, is under threat. Surrey Council plans to cut its schools and special educational needs and disabilities budget by £20 million. Like councils up and down the country, its finances are in crisis. And what do you say to people who say councils have to make cuts? Yes, I do understand that there are budget restraints, but why should the most vulnerable members of society suffer? You know, mainstream schools are extremely difficult for children with autism. Ch you know, these children have social communication disorders, so to be in a class of 30 is difficult for them. Very, very difficult. Next month, Debbie's family and four others from Surrey whose children have special educational needs are challenging the council's failure to consult parents before it announced the cuts. I do feel torn, yes, but it's the local authority that have a legal duty to provide for my children. Thank you ever so much for coming at such short notice. Debbie's at a meeting of the campaign group fighting Surrey's SEND cuts. A lot of your children will take transport to school, the support in mainstream or special school support. Lots of different areas being um, potentially cut and, and, and that's the reason why I felt so strongly that we needed to stand up to these cuts. Alicia and other parents crowdfunded to help pay for the judicial review against Surrey Council, raising the money in less than two days. They say services are already stretched. We had to wait two years for him to get speech therapy anyway, even though they said he needed it straight away because he couldn't speak. And then when, when we did get it, he only got six weeks of it, and that's it. Six weeks? Just yeah. six weeks. Six weeks. Local authorities are legally obliged to ensure children are supported in education if they need it, but it often doesn't happen without a fight. Can I ask, how many people here have been to tribunal once? And twice? Three times? Four times? So there's already half of us here who have been <laughs> four times to tribunal. It's not up to us to be running off to tribunal four, five, six times yet yeah, to make them conform to their statutory instead of requirement. Francesca and her family had to battle to get her into a specialist college rather than the mainstream sixth form the council wanted her to attend. I gathered there'd be a lot of you know, typical people who might not really understand, you know, that I actually do need support and I'm not actually disabled. Could you push to the sh shadows? So obviously the next step is the 2nd and the 3rd of October. We can hopefully affect change so that the cut, if the cuts do come back, they won't be anywhere to the same um, level of 21 million. Asking a judge to rule on whether a public body has broken the law isn't new. But using judicial reviews to fight these council cuts is. I think what is different now is the particular focus on special educational needs and disability. This seems to be a particular uh, wave of, of cuts at the moment in that area. Um, we already know that local authorities are considering making further significant cuts in the next financial year in this area. Uh, and if those cuts aren't made in a lawful way, um, it may well be that uh, more parents will seek to bring challenges against those decisions. No ifs, no buts, no SEN cuts. Bristol parents got the ball rolling. They won a judicial review last month against their city council, which planned £5 million of send cuts and hadn't consulted on them.
Parents of disabled children in London's Hackney are also heading for the High Court. Dana and her daughter Sade, a fashion student, amongst them. It's a sleeve, is it? Yes. It's fabric that I put embroidery and we printed the design onto. Sade has a muscle weakening condition and acute narcolepsy. It took 10 years of battling to get the extra support her mum argued she needed at her mainstream school. She would fall asleep up to 30 times a day and it could be anything between two minutes to an hour. It could be when she was eating, or it could be when she was using the toilet, it could be when she was having a bath. And what would you like the judge to say? when your judicial review is heard? I'd love the judge to say, um, no cuts at all. <laughs> because not all parents have, would be able to fight like this. I mean, normally you'd give up at the first hurdle or second hurdle or third, but it takes a huge amount of effort to keep going. And now Newsnight has learned of another, perhaps even more significant legal challenge. Parents from around the country are crowdfunding to raise the cash to take central government to court. They say their disabled children's education is being penalised by the cuts the government's made to local authority funding. My advice is they have a voice and I believe that they should fight for their child. These courts are not valid courts. You know, we can court in other areas, but not our children, especially the ones that need the help especially the vulnerable children.